Hey everyone, welcome. We're gonna get started here somewhere down there, right? In about 15 minutes or so, all right? As always, I chime in just a little bit early to just talk about a few things, show off a few things, do a few demos, just have some fun, kind of an opening act. And as you know, before we had real trouble with the audio. And so once again, I think I've uh, kind of tested some of the audio. I have a lot more options this time. I listened to the playback of our last uh, lecture, and you're right, the audio was awful. I'm impressed that you all stuck with it. So as folks come in, we'll go ahead and, and get started here in about 14 minutes. We're going to be using the whiteboard today. I know, kind of this weird mix of new tech and old tech, but that's okay. That's the way I roll. We're going to try a whole bunch of things this semester. We're going to use all kinds of technologies, all kinds of techniques, modalities, you name it. Remember, we're experimenting a lot this time around because we want to figure out some really cool, engaging, effective ways to use this live broadcast remote medium. So we've got folks chiming in here and so forth. As you come in, let me know if the audio is any good, would you? Uh, remember, last time it was pretty bad. And once again, I'm drinking in your ear. That's not cool. I need to I need to hit the mute button when I do that. So yeah, let me know when you come in how that audio is trying. And we'll actually, once we get a few folks, I'll try different microphones. I've got them all good. Hey, Bryce, sounds good. Awesome. I'm stoked about that. Um, hey, you know what it took? I just rebooted the system. You know how every once in a while it just takes a reboot? But Bryce, what I've also done this time around is I've uh, set up some different microphones. So um, let's play around with this a little bit. Um, you need one, uh, audio is great, as Braden says, great. I'm, I'm stoked. So right now I'm speaking on the Shure SM7B, okay? This mic right here, yeah, it's a really nice mic. So Bryce says, you need one of these, yeah. This is a sweet, sweet mic. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to switch over to a, um, a boom mic. It's going to sound a lot different, but I want you guys to tell me what you think of it when it comes in. Okay, I am now on a boom mic. I'm no longer using the Shure. I'm on a boom mic that's right up there. I know that sounded awful, right? Um, so I'm curious, how does the boom mic sound? Does it come in all right? It's probably more echoey, maybe a little tinny. That's just the way it is in this small studio. So let me know how that mic is. Let's see what Braden and Bryce think of this, this boom mic. Okay. Um, oh, it almost sounds delayed. Baby, I can fix that. I can fix that. Let's fix that delay. So we're going to come here to the properties. Cancel. Hold on. Cancel. Cancel. Discard. All right. So we're going to come to the advanced properties. I'm going over. Um, oh, wow. I have it on the 100 milliseconds. That's interesting. Okay, so in my recording, when I go back and look at this later, I'll see what the delay is, and I'll see um, what I need to do to fix that. Um, just for grins and giggles, I'm gonna put it at zero and close. Um, so I'll then see if the delay is, uh, is any better here, because I, took, I had a delay on it, because the Shure SM7B requires it, but this Rode NTG3 may not require it. So we'll see how that is. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to test yet a third mic. Do I not have it here listed? Oh, I don't have it here listed, so I need to add that. We're not gonna test the third mic. We're gonna come over to, um, 
back to the Shure SM7B. Okay, now we're back on this mic here. So um, I'm curious if you prefer one over the other, let me know. You know, we'll see uh, if, if one comes in better than the other. I kind of feel like this would be the better one, but I'm not on the listening end, right? Okay, yeah, let's see what you say there to that. And in the meantime, I think I need to add a mic to this one. Let's see here. I'm going to add a mic right here. Yeah, I'm going to add a mic here. We're going to come over here. Audio capture. I'm going to put in my Rode Plus. Okay, and it's turned off right now. Good, good. I like the one you are on now. Good, Bryce. That's kind of what I thought. I kind of felt that the one I'm on right now is the most effective. Um, but what I would like to do now is I want to try a third one. So I'm going to turn off this and go over to a third. Okay, I am now on a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Uh, once again, you can't see it. It's right there, just below the camera. Uh, this is one that I actually think I'm going to use for most of my um, like uh, when I shoot videos in this studio because it's supposed to be pretty good. I think it's pretty good and it's out of frame, right? This sure is really nice, but it's in frame. I'd kind of like something out of frame. So um, Bryce, let me know what you think of the mic that I'm on right now. Tell me, tell me what you think of this because this is the newest one to my collection. I know once you start down this path of doing videos and live stream and all that, there's no end to the gear that you end up getting. It's, it's just ridiculous. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful because uh, it'll take you down some pretty expensive paths. Um, can the volume be a little higher? You sound far away. Yes. Yes, the volume can be a little higher. So I've uh, kind of put that up a little bit more. So tell me what you think of it now. If it, if I sound a little closer, Bryce, um, it's, it's not bad though. Okay, not bad. But it sounds like the one to go with is this bad boy right here, which totally makes sense to me. So with that, Here we are. We're going to stick with this mic right here. That was the plan all along, but I figured since last time we had such awful audio, I wanted to make sure that I had all my mics set up properly and that they were all functioning. So if one goes south, I can go to some backups. Um, that's much better. Okay, so Bryce, when I went to that other one, as a matter of fact, I'll go back to it right now. Okay, so much better. You can hear me better. It's closer. What do you think of the audio quality of this mic that I'm on now? This is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus out of frame there. Tell me what you think about it. You said before I sounded kind of far away. I turned up the gain on it. And so hopefully now it's coming in pretty good. You know, I have to be careful, guys, because I yell and scream. My voice is so loud that when I get new mics, I turn the gain all the way down practically on these things because otherwise I blow them out and it gets all distorted and it's awful for you guys. So yeah, Bryce, tell me what you think of the one that I'm on right now. And then we'll go to our, our real ones and, uh, and we'll, we'll get started here in five minutes. And any of the rest of you, okay, here we go. Uh, Drew, this audio has a little bit of distortion. It's a lower quality. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. I am going to come right over here. Um, yeah, not as good as uh, the mic uh, that's in frame is nice. Could be a little louder. I could probably increase the um, gain and so forth. Um, for this, but when it comes to these classes and so forth, I'm totally going to use the shore.
because this is the best mic I've got right here. Sounds kind of distorted, that other one. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. I'll need to experiment with that one, especially as I start shooting videos with it. Um, I think the video on should I go to college or do I need a college degree, that video that I shot, should I, do I need a college degree? I think I shot that one with this other new mic. So I'll do some, do some tests. So for this, we're going to stick with this one right here. Well, I hope you guys have been having a great week so far. Um, of course, we got a three-day weekend coming up. You know, I always have to watch it because um, I, I always ask students, hey, you got anything planned for this three-day weekend? And you respond back to me, dude, I work. Sure, I don't have classes, but I work. And it's one of these things of where I need to remember back in the day when I was working to go to college and so on and so forth. Yeah, days off were kind of a fictional concept. So I get it. I get it. I hope you can do something, though. Myself, my wife and I were installing new kitchen cabinets. Um, this is and I'm not making this up. This is the sixth month of us working on this new kitchen. And we're finally at the stage where we're installing cabinets. And since I don't know how to install cabinets, we're going really, really slow because I don't want to screw anything up. Uh, so we've got now a three-day weekend to where we can hopefully make some headway on this. I'm really hopeful for that. So let me know if any of you have any plans for this three-day weekend in the two minutes and 45 seconds we have left. Um, Let's see. Yeah, that's true. No days off in adulthood. Isn't that the truth? You know, okay. So every once in a while, and I get this, I took the summer off when it came to classes. I did not take any classes during the summer. So I took the summer off, although I taught classes, right? So I worked. So every once in a while, come the end of spring, I'll ask my students, hey, what classes are you taking in the summer? And they're like, oh, I'm taking the summer off. And I thought, Okay, this is probably about the last time in your life where you can take a summer off, so I get it. Um, because our whole lives in school, we get to take the summer off, right? Pretty cool. And first couple of years of college are probably the last time you get to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, Brooke, holidays just mean homework and catching up. That's okay. Being behind is stressful. Trust me, I know. I really, really, really know. It's actually one of my chief stress anxiety triggers. When I'm late or behind, there are a few things that, that induce anxiety in me more than being late or behind. Therefore, I'm always early. Ergo, I'm starting this thing 15 minutes early, right? And I'm always showing up to things early and I'm always leaving early. And I like to be way ahead on work just because I'm allergic to stress. So I get it. Very good. Um, oh, you know what? It occurred to me well, I might have to do this uh, a little differently with the video. That's all right. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. Because we're using the whiteboard today, but I still want to get you guys the credit for your participation. Um, yeah. Yeah, Brian. There's really no such thing as getting holiday off. Oh, when you work retail? Ain't that for damn sure right? That's like the peak season is we need people here for Labor Day because we got all their Labor Day sales. They can't wear white anymore. We gotta, gotta sell stuff. I have no idea what that whole wearing white after Labor Day stuff is about. I'm not even that old <laughs> where I know what that means. All right, so we're getting folks coming in. That's excellent. Got a, got a few of us here. And, uh, and then we'll get set. What I am going to do is I'm going to use the whiteboard a lot today, but uh, I'll make sure that we're still tallying up our, our points. So with that, let's do this. So I'm going to go ahead and come back over here. Now, yeah, normally I have a presentation here and so forth. You know what? I ought to put something back there 
just so that uh, it doesn't look just like awful, right? I wanna make sure that you guys still get to tally up points. And so you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull this up and I'm gonna remove that and then hit that. And now we have it in the background. And that way, whenever you guys do awesome things, we can come over here and we can tally up. And as a matter of fact, we're gonna go ahead and start that right now. Okay, we're gonna start that right now because I've had a whole bunch of folks helping and you've been chatting, folks helping me with the audio and so forth. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some, uh, some freebies in there, okay? So with that, Hey, this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, you have been, you, you may not be done yet, but uh, pretty soon you'll be done watching a series of videos on the fundamentals of communication. Those videos that you're watching were among the first real videos that I made under Nutshell Brainery. They're like five years old now, something like that. So you're seeing the real juxtaposition of, of the skills and, and quality from five years ago. Nevertheless, they're pretty solid. And they take us through the whole cycle of communication. So we've got, we start with the purpose, and we're gonna talk through all of these, purpose, audience, channel, uh, format, and then message. All right. Today, we are really going to dig deep into audience because, oh, man, once you understand your audience, everything else takes care of itself. Everything else takes care of itself. And yet understanding the audience is the trickiest darn part. OK, so um, let me take what I'm doing right now through this cycle. I'm communicating with you guys, right? Morning, Matt. So my purpose, well, my purpose in communicating right now is to help you understand and put together the fundamental elements of communication that you're learning about in the videos, basically videos in lieu of a textbook, so that when it comes time for you to do a strategic communications plan, you have this whole sort of cycle continuum in mind. That's my purpose, okay? Um, so who's my audience? Well, now you're my audience. Okay, okay, but who are you? Well, for the most part, although we may have some other folks with us, for the most part, you are Salt Lake Community College students. That is a demographic. We're gonna talk about this. Salt Lake Community College students who are in my class, who want to better understand the material so you can do well on the assignment, so you can get good grades and go on to programs at university, things like that. That's who you are. All right, good. So that means I need to figure out what channel I'm going to use to communicate my purpose. Excuse me. Well, there are any number of channels. I could be doing this through billboards. I know, ridiculous. I get it, right? But think about it. There's an infinite number of channels. I'm not buying TV commercials to do this. I'm not um, sending you emails to do this. I'm not even sending you texts to do this. The best way to go deeper into a topic is more one-on-one. -on -one face-to-face. -face. Now, in this particular class, we are not doing face-to-face, -face, but this is a pretty good darn close second, right? So therefore, I'm using this particular channel. Well, then channels need to be formatted. So how have I formatted this channel? Well, probably not well, but I'm trying. I'm learning. I'm using OBS which means that uh, I'm you know, using all kinds of technology here and so forth. 
And since my background is kind of this industrial theme, I tried to set up my, my PowerPoints and my system to be kind of industrial. Um, if I'm truthful, I don't know that that's the most effective format, but I'm trying, I'm learning, right? So I need to better understand what format would be most effective. Now, who decides that? The audience. Audience feedback tells me whether or not the format I'm using is any good, okay? And then that finally takes us to the message. And the message is what I'm delivering right now. Now, here's the thing. I contend that many of us, when we communicate, moi aussi, me too, okay? Um, we don't really think about the purpose. We don't think about the audience so much. We're not thinking about the channel. We're not thinking, we, we just jump right in the message. We just jump right in the message. And if we're going to be effective communicators, we can't do that. We need to really build this out. Okay, so I, I showed you what my, how I'm using this process in this experience. By the way, let me come back here to purpose. Remember, I told you my purpose was to help you better understand this material at a deeper level. But I have another purpose as well, one built in the psychology of communication. Remember, this is something we talked about on Tuesday with that awful audio, right? What is my other purpose? I want to endear myself to you. I want to come across as credible. I want to come across as trustworthy, somebody you can trust and confide in, somebody who you can say he knows what he's talking about. I want to come across as, as technologically savvy and somebody who has taken the time to learn all this stuff so that he can be more effective in communicating. So I'm also trying to build relationships with you. Kind of hard to do remotely, right? Ergo, we try all kinds of different things. Okay, now, here's what we want to do. I want you to tell me what your purpose is. We're going to come back to audience in a moment. But as you attend this live stream, and as you put comments in the chat, what is your purpose? Why are you attending? Why are you contributing to chat? All answers are correct. And all answers are going to get you the kudos, right? So let's take a couple minutes. Why are you attending? Because there's a purpose behind it. Why are you contributing to the chat? There's a purpose behind it. And these are forms of communication. All right. Um, I have a puppy over here, so we'll go to our puppy cam for a couple minutes.
Okay, fantastic. So let's go ahead and read through these. And we're going to start stacking up those uh, extra credit kudos here pretty darn quick. Um, Bry says to gain knowledge, get the points. Absolutely. There's a purpose. Sometimes the purpose is, is pretty mercenary, right? Um, let's see. Um, this, uh, we'll come back to the question of last week's lecture and the quiz. We'll come back to that. Um, so I can have better understanding of the material, get better, you know, get good grades. Anastasia says, absolutely. Colton, personal growth and better engagement. That's an awesome, well, they're all awesome purposes. Okay. I, I resonate with that purpose, I should say. Um, let's see. Uh, Drew says the purpose for attending is to get better understanding of the material. Of course, get the points. Um, Braden, I really enjoy business. I wanted to explore the courses, right? You know, um, okay. Help me understand better, better relationship. I love it. Aaron, I'm attending to approve the breadth of my business communication tools and skills. I'm interacting to discipline myself to remain engaged as an active learner so I don't zone out. Okay, this is freaking good, right? We all know, I know because I do it. I am not slamming on students. We all do it. During these streams and so forth, it takes an enormous amount of discipline to stay engaged and to stay focused. I appreciate that. I get it, right? Um, Riley, my purpose of attending a class is to gain more experience and knowledge, um, get my voice out there, help the class out. Awesome, right? Riley, you know, similar, get... Uh, Let's see, Brooke attending this class to help acquire credits toward the degree. Absolutely. You guys, you're, you're getting it all, right? Um, Brian chimed in, same sort of thing uh, for a future career. Matt chimed in, um, diversifying myself to become more of a three-dimensional character. I like it. I like it. Okay, so this is what we're going to do, folks. I have no idea. But I'm just going to go ahead and make some uh, assumptions here, right? We're taking this on up to 10, and we're taking this on up to 10. Because I don't want to count. I just want to party all day. So, fantastic. We've already got our first two 10s, right? So, what this means is that you want to send me an email with a timestamp. Our timestamp is going to be, what time is it? What time is it? 8.43. 8.43. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the comments here. We'll go ahead and do 8.43. 8.43. Okay. Oh, yeah. You got it, folks. You got it. So we're already getting there, right? Fantastic. Okay. So we've established that we both have a purpose in our communications, right? Now let's talk about our audience. This is the important. Oh, by the way, I said I would answer that other question. Last week's lecture is not part of the quiz. The quiz that you do today, and it's due today, right, is all about this that is from both this lecture and from uh, the videos that you've been watching. You really need to definitely watch those videos. This lecture does a deeper dive into the concepts included in those videos, okay? Last week's lecture was to set the frame for it all, set the context for what we're doing, and for personal edification, okay? All right, we want to do a deep dive into audience. This is the most important part. So. Check this out. Audience Have you ever noticed it's harder to spell when you're writing in all caps, right? So audience is made up of demographics or often measured in demographics, psychographics,
and context. Okay, we're going to explore these. Now, my guess, and you're you're welcome to chime in, and as a matter of fact, um, oh, what was the name of the video series again? So, Matt, the name of the video series is The Fundamental... Um, uh, here, I'll even show you. Let's go ahead and make sure that we are all set. So, oh, uh, ha. All right, we're going to come on over here. I am going to get out of the way. And we'll come on over here to Canvas. Yeah, let's make sure we got these. All right, so here's your class, folks, right? And we are doing Module 2, Identifying Purpose, Audience, and Channels, right? So you click here. And the videos that you're watching are on two of these pages. It's these fundamentals, these four videos. I'm, you're right there. You're right there. Four videos here. And you hit, hit next. And then it is these four videos here. Of course, these are available on Nutshell Brainery under Fundamentals of Communication Playlist. But those are the ones that are actually part of the um, quiz for today. Okay. All right. So hopefully that answers that question, Matt, and we should be good. And if not, ask another question. By the way, you know what I'm going to do? You know what we should do? I need to put in here something around questions. I'm going to put questions under real world examples. I've had two questions. I'm going to put those under there. That's something I ought to do. I ought to add questions to this. Okay, let's come back to this. Now, demographics, psychographics, context. Um, my guess is that all of you have heard the term demographics. Okay, you've heard the term. My guess, though, is that many of you have not heard the term psychographics. And if you have heard the term psychographics, you heard them in a marketing class, okay? So if that's true, put, put it in the comments. Tell me what class you heard psychographics in or where you heard about psychographics. Um, and we'll put that in a reference to a past lecture. Psychographics are not mentioned nearly as much as demographics. Well, why is that? Well, let's first define these things. Demographics are things like age, race, gender, ethnicity, where you live, religion, things that are easy to observe and measure. Okay. Um, sociology class, that is absolutely somewhere where you would come across demographic, I mean, psychographics. Yes, very good, Braden. I, I, I could see that. So demographics are easy to observe and measure. Okay, very easy to observe and measure. For example, and we're going to dig deeper into this, you can easily observe and measure right now that I am an old white male in Utah. It, you didn't need to do a survey. You didn't need to go to Ancestry.com. You, you can observe that I am an old white male in Utah. But you know what? Demographics alone really don't mean anything. They mean nothing for the most part. I'm going to show you what I mean. What we really want to know are the psychographics of our audience. Oh, we want to know psychographics. Psychographics are what are their attitudes, their beliefs, their tastes, their, the, the, the values that push their behavior forward, that cause them to behave the way they do. What are their opinions and values and attitudes that cause them to make the decisions and behave in the way that they do? That's really what we want to know. But here's the problem. Psychographics are really hard to observe and measure. 
really hard. And so we do this instead. We use demographics as a back door to psychographics. This is called stereotyping. Now, before I break down stereotyping, and I will, I'll break it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to posit something. I'm going to say that stereotyping is good. Stereotyping is what allows you to get into a rental car that you've never been in before and drive it. Because everything is more or less where it is. Now, you have to take a few minutes to kind of figure it out, right? But eventually you can figure it out. Stereotyping, therefore, is a great way to initiate a relationship, to initiate an engagement. When you walk into McDonald's, you, or, or let, let's just say, when, when you walk into school, when you walk into class, you assume it's going to be in English, the class. That's a stereotype. Now, you might find out later, no, it's not, right? And then you learn more on it. But the way you initiated the relationship, initiated the engagement, was based on stereotype. When I walked into my art classroom, I had my art class last night, um, there are no chairs in that art room. There's these weird plank bench things that, frankly, I had never seen before. So I had to kind of rewire my brain on how to use these things because my stereotype was broken when I walked in and saw no desks and no chairs. So stereotype is a great way to initiate an engagement. I want to be really clear about this. It is the wrong way, wrong way, unethical, immoral way to decide a relationship. In other words, you don't just look at somebody and say, I have you figured out from your stereotype. I don't need to learn any more about you. Uh -uh. <laughs> it's just the starting point. OK, now to show you what I mean, we're going to we're going to do something here. We'll come back to this. I, me, moi, I am an old white male. And that we're still, yeah, I'll just do it here, in Utah. Okay? Old white male. Sorry about that. I'm an old white male in Utah. In the comments here, I want you to tell me your stereotype assumptions about me. Okay? I'm going to list the key ones up as they come up, and then we're going to explore them. So what are your stereotype demographic assumptions about me when it comes to being an old white male in Utah? Okay, and then we'll have some fun exploring this. So back to our puppy cam. Where's my puppy cam? There it is. <laughs>
I was having so much fun writing these things down that I realized, oh, hold on, the music stopped. <laughs> okay, this is really good. Okay, so I want to be clear. I want to restate my thesis. All right. My thesis is that stereotypes are how we can initiate an engagement, right? So when I walk into REI, I don't have to try to figure out what language do I need to speak when I walk in there. Um, when I get into a rental car, I'm going to assume that all the things are there to be able to drive off. But stereotypes are an awful way to decide a relationship. Going back to my rental car example, I actually hate renting a car because it actually takes some work. It takes a while to kind of rewire the brain to figure out where everything is. I know every car is like every car is like every car, but they're not. And you have to take time to get to know the car before you drive out of the airport. OK, so watch this. Married. OK, these are because I'm an old white male in Utah. You assume married. Yeah, I'm totally married. And in fact, I am like the world's biggest fan of marriage. I love being married. All right. Your stereotype paid off. Hetero. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Now, I say for the most part. I kind of person. Now, this is where we're learning more about the person. OK, remember, I said that it's a great place to initiate an engagement, but you actually want to use that initiation to learn more. I sort of believe that everybody's on a spectrum. Right. And so, yeah, I'm hetero. But you know what? I see. Oh, gosh, what's his name? Come on. He plays Aquaman. And uh, Matau, I forget his name. All right. He plays Aquaman in the in the, you know, Justice League movies. It's like, come on, you can't not go low. Right. The Rock. OK, so, yeah. Can okay, now watch this LDS? Well, yes, actually. However, I have not been active in quite some time. I did join the LDS church when I was 15 years old, and I did serve an LDS mission. So, and I've raised my kids in the LDS faith, and I was married in the temple. So your stereotype was correct, okay? Um, you second that, Lorena? Yeah, Jason Momoa, thank you, Bryce. Oh, yeah, right. So, however, I have not been active in a, quite some time. There are many things that just have, you know, that run counter to who I am. And so I've just kind of stepped aside. Nevertheless, I respect my LDS background. I respect the faith and I respect those and my family who are in it. But now that may be something that you go, really, I'd like to learn more. The stereotype has broken a little bit, right? But it was... Oh, Thor. Oh, yeah, Heron. <laughs> Especially when he takes his shirt off. Anyway, we're, we're digressing, right? Um, well off. You know what? I am, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. That was a long, hard road. That was a long, long, hard road. I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I was born with a lot of privilege and a lot of opportunity. And yeah, today I'm OK. All right. I can afford to teach at a community college and do all right. OK, country. With all due respect to those of you who like country. Hell no. Hell no. OK, I like. Oh, what's her name? Um. Gosh, you know who I'm talking about. Blonde girl, mega famous. People either love her or hate her, but you should love her. Um, Taylor Swift. There we go. Um, there we go. Taylor Swift. I like Taylor Swift. Now, rock. Yes, I enjoy rock, but that's not 100% my thing. I like electronic dance music. I like folk music. I like punk rock. I like 
some hip hop. And so, yeah, it's, I'm pretty diverse in that area. I love to maintain my lawn. Yes, I love to maintain my lawn. Lots of kids, grandkids. I do have lots of kids. I don't have grandkids. And kids are a complicated thing, but I do have them, so you're right. Love the outdoors. You know what? This one is kind of open because I used to love the outdoors, but for various reasons, we have not been able to enjoy the outdoors for many, many, many years because of some family issues. And so I've kind of lost my taste for the outdoors. Golf? No, I don't golf. Watching sports? No, I don't watch sports. News on 24-7 in various forms? Yeah. Okay. So here's my point. Your stereotype gave you a pretty good direction. But I'm hoping you're finding that by learning more about me and by having this conversation, there may be one or two things that don't hold to the stereotype and you would like to learn more about. Just as in when I meet you guys as students, I have stereotypes that pop in my head. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I love it when my stereotypes are wrong. It is so fun and exciting. It's like discovering a unicorn. It's like discovering a new person that I didn't know was there. I'm getting giddy just thinking about it. So yeah, that's what we do with demographics. We use them as a back door to psychographics, okay? But now, ultimately, we want to know the psychographics. We want to know their attitudes. We want to know their behaviors and so forth. So psychographics that I've researched about students say that um, school is not your full-time job. School is just many things that you do to get by and you work, you have friends, you have family, you have obligations. School is just one of many. And so I need to understand that when I give work and so forth. You're busy people. I understand that you're a generation or you're folks who really like just-in-time information. And so I understand that many of you are going to watch the videos that are due for today's quiz today. Okay? That's fine. That's, that's perfectly all right. I know that many of you really want to know what's in it for me with this degree. You're ROI driven. You want a return on your investment. And you're, you don't see the point. And by the way, I'm with you. What's the point in taking a class that is not going to contribute to my financial life and security and, you know, self-actualizing goals, right? Um, you're very comfortable with video. You're very comfortable with audio. Therefore, I feel I can make videos for you guys, right? These are your psychographics that I drive toward. But many of you deviate from these, right? Because we're all individuals. Okay, that's going to take us to the last part of this that I really want to find a way to help you understand. Um, by the way, by the way, all those things, I'm counting those bad boys that you gave as real world examples. Okay, I'm counting those as real world examples. And so you don't need to send an additional email. All right. I'm just giving you the kudos here for um, chiming in with all of those stereotypes of me. Okay, because... Well done. Well done. All right. The last thing I want to make sure we understand, and let me come on over here to kind of help do this. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Is context. Context in communication is one of the more difficult ideas to wrap our minds around because 
it is everywhere, ubiquitous, and in many cases, invisible. All right. Um, it's kind of like the old saying of an old fish comes up to these two young fish and he says, hey, guys, how's the water today? And then he swims off. And then one fish looks at the other fish and says, what's water? When you've been in water your entire existence and it's the only medium you have ever known, it's hard to recognize it as a distinct thing. Same thing goes with context, right? Is It's everywhere, all the time, invisible, and yet it profoundly affects how we communicate, okay? So let me show you some things. You're going to come across a few things in the video. You're going to come up to temporal. You're going to come up to physical. And you're going to come up to social and you are going to do uh, cultural. I want to demonstrate to you how these forms of context have affected our conversation today. OK, and I'm going to pull up your uh, at your your chat there so I can see your chat coming in. So. Temporal context is where are you in time and space, okay? Because the time and space in which you're communicating um, can affect the communication. So, for instance, and again, I'm not trying to rag on anyone. This is just normal, okay? Because you're busy people. Let's say that I get a question. Um, OK, you have a quiz due Thursday today at midnight, today at midnight, today at midnight, you have a quiz due. Let's say that on Monday, this Monday, a few days ago, I got a question saying, hey, I just want to make sure these are the videos that are in the quiz. Is that correct? I go, yeah. But now let's say I get the very same email on Thursday at 11.15 p.m. Hey, I just want to verify these are the videos in the email, in the quiz, right? The very fact that one was like three or four days before the quiz was due and the other was 45 minutes before the quiz was due affects how I receive that communication. For the first person, I go, this person's on top of it. They're ahead. They're doing well. All right. And for the other person, I'm like, well, I'm glad you've at least gotten around to it. I mean, this is kind of a hell of a time to ask me a question about a quiz. You're lucky I'm even checking my email, right? The message was exactly the same. The message was the same. The purpose was the same. The audience was the same. The channel was the same. The only thing that was different was the time of the email. And that affected the whole meaning of the message. Does that make sense? I hope I hope you get that. Um, it's it's a fascinating thing. Now, let's take physical context. All right. Where we, yeah, yeah, Lorena, yeah, procrastinator, but sometimes we don't have a choice, right? <laughs> because we're busy. Physical context. Where are, you know, your, the physical situation, right? Um, for example, right now we are remote, which means there is a greater pressure upon you to stay engaged. It's harder for you. It is harder for you to stay engaged in this medium, okay? And if I'm a good communicator, I need to understand that. I need to understand that the physical context is such that I need to find new and interesting and worthwhile ways to engage with you guys, right? Um, so Aaron says, time and contest, asking someone, someone something serious before they've had their morning coffee. 
by the way, Lorraine, I'm, I'm, you know, I just because you guys are still engaged, engaged, I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple to past lectures, even though those aren't past lectures. I just like the fact that you guys are still churning out stuff. Okay, so that's the physical context. Social context. All right, let's play with this for a second. There are many, many social paradigms, social constructs, okay? A social construct is in this situation when people inhabit different social strata and roles and responsibilities, this is how we engage. For example, tell me if any of you have ever had a coworker who was promoted to then be your boss. Because that is now a different social context. Before, when you're a coworker, you could talk and engage and, and have conversations in a certain social context. But now that the social context has changed and they're your boss, your communications change. All right. And the meaning of things that they say and the meaning of things that you say change. Right. Um, so, Aaron, yeah, you've seen that. Right. So and you don't see it, but I'm giving another point in there. So. For instance. In right now. Right now, it's what I don't know. What time is it? Nine fifteen. 9.15 on a Thursday, temporal context, we are in a class. In this particular context, I'm the professor. And in this particular social context, you are the student. Which means that your, yeah, roles change exactly. Um, in this social construct, I do this, that's what professors do, and you do this, listening, looking like you're listening, things like that, that's what students do. And you try to pick up what you need to pick up to do well on the assignments, to get the points, to learn the skills. That's the social context. However, if I met you on the street on Labor Day on Monday, and I started talking about this, you'd be like, dude, back off. Um, we're not in class right now. You're not my teacher. I'm not your student. What the F, right? Because in that context, our relationship has changed. All right. Okay. Now, just so you know, I'm still stacking up points because I see your comments. Here's the last one. Cultural. Cultural context is what can we talk about culturally? What are things, what does something mean in one cultural context versus another? So if I put this all together, for example, I said earlier, hey, I'm a, um, oh, by the way, Brian says, uh, so my coworkers that become my manager is an example of social context. Yes, yes, because the social context has changed. As Lorena puts it, roles have changed. Therefore, the dynamic has changed. Very good, good. Um, so earlier, I said, hey, I am an old white male in Utah. Tell me about your stereotypical views of me. Now, a few things happened when I did that. Some of you may have felt a little uncomfortable. Dude, are we talking about age and gender and race? Ooh, I thought those were the third rail. I don't talk about them. Uh, some of you have thought, there's no way in hell I'm going to tell this guy my stereotypical view of him because he's my professor and I want the points. I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds me. So I'm a little hesitant to answer truthfully, right? These are examples of social and cultural context, right? Where 
talking about these things were difficult. On the other hand, you said, okay, hold on, hold on. In this context, this is a classroom. We're talking about audience. We're talking about demographics and psychographics. He's using this as an example. Therefore, I can get on board with this example because it's relevant. It's germane to what we're studying. On the other hand, if I were to come up to you on the street, you know, and say, hey, I'm an old white male. You're a young Latina female. Let's talk about our stereotypes of each other. You'd be like, that is so inappropriate, Lon. I can't even begin to express how disturbing this is to me. Context can make some conversations appropriate, some inappropriate, right? So that's the power of this. That's the power of this. So when you guys do your strategic communications plan and campaign here toward the last third of the uh, semester, you're going to be talking about all these things, purpose, audience, including demographic, psychographics, context, leading up to channels and format and messaging, all that good stuff. So if you, as you go about the videos for this week and then take the quiz, please take the time to really think about these ideas, take some notes and have them in your toolbox because you're going to be using them for these assignments coming up. OK, so just OK, we have one more comment here from Matt. Uh, cultural, social related. It seems there's uh, been a big emphasis in recent years on wars between generations that could have led people negatively stereotyping based on generations. Mwah. Yes, we are actually in one of our future lectures. We're going to go into depth on intergenerational communication. Um, Every generation is awesome. Every generation is flawed. There's no purpose in demonizing the other generation. There's every purpose in understanding how they think, how they communicate, how they work, how they collaborate. And we're going to go into depth on that. So excellent, excellent point. I'm going to I'm going to bring that on up here as well as with some others. Um, folks. That is, that's it for today. Um, you're going to send me your timestamp. I'm going to take care of you because you took care of me. So thank you very much. And I will stick around if you have any other questions, comments, or anything like that. I'll stick around for a little bit. Otherwise, we're all set. And I will see you guys again on Tuesday. And if you want to set up a Zoom at any time between now and Tuesday, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget the assignment and we'll see you then. Have a good one.